Hello, and welcome to the Black Ponder. I'm Neil Trotter. Let me ask you a question. Are you happy? I mean, are you really happy? Are you like truthfully, sincerely happy? Now you might think you're happy, but you're not. You're, you're not. You're, you're not really happy. <laughs> At least that's according to Aristotle. I mean, this is what he's saying in, in his uh, Nicomachean Ethics. That's what we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> Check it out. According to the Nicomachean Ethics, happiness isn't just uh, simply an emotion or some sort of feeling you get when good things happen to you or when you're really glad or um, something pleasurable happens to you. That's not really what true happiness is. According to Aristotle, happiness is an end-all conclusion or result to a complete virtuous life. So you can only really truly be happy at the end of a, a, a successfully good life. Now, what does that really mean? Uh, do you agree? <laughs> it's kind of hard to kind of wrap your head around that. Uh, the introduction actually does a good job explaining what that really means. And I'll, I'll start with quoting the introduction because uh, these introductions are really good for books like these. If they're really good introductions because they kind of give you a summary and break it down in terms of context. Let me start off with that first. The ethics, Aristotle's ethics, uh, we are thus supposing it's not telling us how to be morally good men or even how to be humanly happy. It is telling us how to live successful human lives, how to, to fit, how to fulfill ourselves as men. And by doing that, by living a successful, complete life, only then will you become truly happy. That's the meaning of the book, really. Let's continue with some quotes from the introduction. A man is happy if and only if, over some considerable period of time, he frequently performs with some success the most perfect of typical human tasks. So what does that mean? That means, um, so Aristotle defines a virtuous task as a task that abides by the function of a person. So let's say you are a jeweler. And so what you need to do in your life is to focus on your craft. Try and make the best jewelry possible. And after being a jewel jeweler for a long time, like you were, you make really nice, very uh, great jewelry for people over your lifetime. And you look back, you're like, "Wow, I made some really good jewelry." Then you can be happy. And, you know, we we're talking about the end of your life. Same thing with like if you're an educator, you've educated um, in a, in a great way that's uh, sincere and genuine, and a lot of people learned a lot. Um, from your education then only then could you say okay I'm happy because I've, I've done a lot of virtuous things and that's what we're talking about here so now let's get into the actual book in book one of that Nico Maki and ethics um, and he just basically uh, breaks it down already just trying to define happiness so he, he just says it right here Happiness then is found to be something perfect and self-sufficient, being the end to which our actions are directed. So again, let's focus on the end, uh, the conclusion, the result. That's where happiness comes from. After we've done something virtuous, we can look back and we can be like, okay, I'm happy now. And here Aristotle further defines happiness. We are now in a position to define the happy man as one who is active in accordance with complete virtue and who is adequately furnished with external goods, and that not for some unspecified period, period but throughout a complete life. And probably we should add destined both to live in this way and to die accordingly, because the future is obscure to us, and happiness we maintain to be an end in every way utterly final and complete. If this is so, then we shall describe those of the living who possess and will continue to possess the stated qualifications as supremely happy, but with a human happiness. 
again, there, I mean, he just breaks it down right there. He lets you know it's uh, a result after a complete life, uh, virtuous acts based off of the function that you were even, you go so far as to say that what you were destined to be. But, you know, you don't have to take it that way. You can just take it the way, like, what do you, what's your calling in life? You know, what do you feel like you should do? And if you uh, go head toward that calling and you achieve it, like, you, you got a dream. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a geologist, whatever. I want to be uh, a lawyer. You focus on the functions that that job, whatever your dream job is or your calling, uh, requires you to do and you do those functions functions in a virtuous way that uh, provides good to people after doing that for a lifetime you, you will find happiness so you might be a little lost as to what virtuous acts actually imply what does what does it mean being having a virtuous act let's delve deep into that because Aristotle has a lot to say about that let's look at another quote this is from book two moral goodness is what it's called men will become good builders as a result of building well and bad ones as a result of building badly otherwise there would be no need of anyone to teach them they would all be born either good or bad now this holds good also of the virtues it is the way that we behave in our dealings with other people that make us just or unjust in the way that we behave in the face of danger, accustoming ourselves to be timid or confident. That makes us brave or cowardly. Hence, we must give our activities a certain quality because it is their characteristics that determine the resulting dispositions. So it is a matter of no little importance what sort of habits we form from the earliest age. It makes a vast difference, or rather all the difference in the world. So this is what he's talking about. We already said you pick a job function or you pick a career, you focus on that job function and you focus on doing it the best way you can to help or provide goodness to as many people as possible. And that's when you become happy. And he's saying that this is all the difference in the world because that's how you do it. That's how you be happy. If you're not doing that, if you're not developing these habits that bring you toward doing virtue, these virtuous acts, these uh, which are following, uh, doing your job function in the best possible way, then you're never going to find happiness and it's just not going to ever happen to you. So that's very important to do that according to Aristotle's uh, ethics. But Aristotle has something else to say about virtuousness. Let's continue with another quote. Moral virtue is a mean and in what sense it is so that it is a mean between two vices, one of excess and the other of deficiency, and that it is such because it aims at hitting the mean point in feeling and actions. For this reason, it is difficult business to be good, because in any given case, it is difficult to find the midpoint. For instance, not everyone can find the center of a circle, only the man who knows how. So too, it is easy to get angry, anyone can do that or to give and spend money but to feel or act towards the right person to the right extent and at the right time for the right reason in the right way that is not easy and it is not everyone that can do it hence to do these things well is a rare laudable and fine achievement so here Aristotle is also talking about being virtuous as uh, hitting an average or like a mean a mean or some sort of middle point um, and that makes sense when you really think about it I mean it's a common concept <laughs> you know uh, I guess you know back back then it might have been new I don't know <laughs> but uh, it makes sense uh, you know think about you know eating for instance any activity like eating um, you eat too much and it's bad for you you can get fat and unhealthy you eat too little what happens you become malnutritioned and such but if you eat just right, you know, you'll be healthy. And that's the same with everything, you know, everything in moderation, um, you know, the Buddhists call it the middle path. Um, it's, you know, that's a common concept and that's definitely, uh, you know, uh, something I would agree with. To be honest though, uh, much of the Nicomachean ethics uh, 
I kind of disagree with um, just because it's just a little bit too old school sometimes I mean this book was written in 350 around that time BC so I'm not, I'm not knocking it I know it's very it's a foundational work and a lot of Western philo philosophical ideas about ethics are built upon this but you know you can definitely see his age I mean here for example here's a quote right here uh, this is from book three uh, surely nobody deliberates about eternal facts such as the order of the universe or the inconsumerability of the diagonal with the side of a square, nor about eternal regular processes, whether they have a necessary or a natural or some kind of cause, such as the solstices or the rising of the sun, nor about irregular happenings like droughts and heavy rainstorms, nor about chance occurrences like the finding of a treasure, for none of these results could be affected by our agency. And of course, that's definitely not true. I mean, we, we, but especially like things like droughts and rainstorms. I mean, you know, we, that's you know our controversy with global warming. And even when we focus on things like uh, the universe, order of the universe, that's cosmology, right? So, uh, uh, so we definitely think about these things and deliberate on on right. You know, back in those days, you accepted those things as happenings of the gods and you just left it to the gods and you didn't really go there or you know and then there's several stories of people getting persecuted and things like that because they actually went there and you know talked deliberated on things like that back in those days so I can see but it I mean that's just one example of how the book shows its age despite that though there is much of the Nico Machian ethics that I, that does resonate with me and I do uh, like what it's saying. I mean, here's a great quote right here from book uh, six. Every art is concerned with bringing something into being, and the practice of an art is a study of how to bring into being something that is capable either of being or of not being, and the cause of which it is in the producer and not in the produ in the product. For it is not with things that are or come to be nece necessity that art is concerned, nor with natural objects, because these have their origin in themselves. And since production is not the same as action, art must be concerned with production, not with action. <laughs> and I so agree with that, because, and that's not just art, but art is a, a good uh, thing to talk about, <laughs> because with when we're talking about art, we're ta you know, I have a lot of art friends, art friends, and art, and you know, I, or I just know a lot of our people, and they call themselves artists, right? Let me make the quotes, artists. But they don't, you know, you don't. They you have nothing really to show for themselves. Now they live the artistic life, the home bohemian life. But where's the production? So <laughs> where's, you know, you can't just. And that's just with anything. That's not with art. You know, say you're an expert in anything, and I've you know come across a lot of people, like I'm this, I'm that. But, I mean, what do you have to show for yourself? I mean, what have you done that demonstrates that you are who you say you are? <laughs> so, rather than just talking and, you know, acting, let's see some production, right? And I think that is part of the way we find happiness that Aristotle is talking about. Like, you can't just, you know, it is about virtuous acts, but it's also about the result of those virtuous acts. And that's really what I took out of the Nicomachean ethics, right? It's about, in the end, like after what we've done, what we've done, like when we look back and we see the result of what we've done, how does that affect um, people? You know, does it affect people in a good way? Does it affect people in a bad way? Or does it not affect people at all? <laughs> you know, I think only when what you've done affects people in a good way, that does make you happy. You know, that is really the ultimate happiness. When you've seen what you've done and you've seen the, seen the result and people are happy because of what you've done, then that's happy. And, you know, art is like kind of the supreme example of that. You know, you make something and people respond to it, you know, and they might not respond to it in a happy way. Maybe they're appalled by it, but maybe that's what you wanted to have happen. Maybe you wanted to give this reaction to, you know, cause awareness or something like that. And, uh, and these things are important to think about. You know, I am definitely for, that quote really uh, brought that to my mind. 
you know, it's about not only what you do, but the result of what you do. I mean, that's very important too. And I do believe that's what results in happiness. Another thing that uh, Nico Machian, <laughs> I keep struggling with that word, the Nico Machian ethics uh, brings up that's, uh, I thought resonated with me was he talks, uh, he talks about friendship. What book is that? That's book uh, eight. Yeah, it's book eight where he talks about friendship. And he's basically saying there's three kinds of friendship. Friendships, right? There's the, the friendship where it's based off of utility, right? Uh, what the other friend can do for me, I scratch your back, you scratch mine type of thing. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. <laughs> and you know, that only goes so far. And that really doesn't give you much happiness because once that friend stops providing you with benefits or you know things that uh, you know you, you can't get any utility out of that friend then he stops being your friend and it's kind of a shallow friendship and he also talks about the second kind of friendship which is uh, friends that provide you with pleasure <laughs> you know I think of like friends with benefits right uh, I mean that's just one example but you know I mean that's, that's a good example a friend that you know you're just kind of like having like an affair with or something like that or you know maybe it's a good friend that you hang out with or you go to like um, clubs or you know bars with and you're just kind of going out night on in town and you're just having fun but it's only to that point where it, again it's not it doesn't go deeper than that it's just like oh I hang out with this person because you know they uh, provide all these pleasures and make they make me feel good and once they stop doing that <laughs> like maybe they're incapable of doing that you go back to the friends with benefits maybe the person finally gets involved with somebody seriously and they you know you can't be friends with benefits anymore they, they're not your friend anymore right <laughs> but then the third friendship is really what he's talking about the true kind of friendship and it's just uh, uh, doing good for somebody because you just you care about them and you you like them because of who they are you know and you like being around them because of who they are and not so much what they can do for you but because you like the way they are and you just enjoy their company and I'm a real fan of that the plutonic friendship uh, I, the friendships when I look back uh, the relationships I had the best relationships I had are the, those kinds of friendships <laughs> are the plutonic friendships the ones where you know I just like hanging out with you because you're just a cool person and you know I, I do things for you because uh, I think you're a good person and uh, I just like doing good things for you and you do good things for me and we just like hanging out and that's what Aristotle argues is that's what provides what can uh, potentially can provide true happiness those kinds of friendships and you should strive toward uh, that kind of relationship rather than the, the previous two and I, I resonate with that I agree with that and that leads us to this other quote that I found that was really good it comes from book nine the, the grounds of friendship <laughs> and uh, I'll conclude with that quote because that's a uh, uh, I thought it was a very powerful quote it talks about uh, when somebody offers something to somebody else usually the offer uh, oftentimes <laughs> um, the offer will be uh, ha will be rewarded more um, emotionally and maybe even other ways as well like spiritually and things like that they'll be they'll feel more good than the person that's actually getting the reward um, you know like if somebody gives help somebody out financially the person that's giving the money feels more happy than the one that's receiving the money even the one even though the one receiving the money is really happy too or, you know things like that um, you know if you're a mentor to somebody you so, oftentimes a mentor is more happier than a mentee and why is that the case? Aristotle tries to explain, and that res this resonates with me. Look, listen to this quote. The reason for this is that existence is to everyone an object of choice and love, and we exist through activity, because we exist by living and acting, and the maker of the work exists in a sense through his activity. Therefore, the maker loves his work, because he loves existence. This is a natural principle for the work reveals in actuality what is only potentially. It is the activity of a present action, the expectation of a future one, and the memory of a past one that give pleasure. 
but the greatest pleasure is that which accompanies the activity and it is similarly the strongest ground for love and that's so true so I, you know just to give you some a, a, an example uh, yeah I'm part of the business we, we host uh, events we do like festivals and I just love going to festivals and seeing people happy <laughs> so based off of the things that I set up the things that I coordinate uh, the festivals that I the games that I make and things like that uh, people are happy you know people oftentimes walk to me and it's like wow this is this is so fun this is like one of the best days that I've had in a long time and that that makes me happy and they're happy too but I gotta tell you like I'm more happier than they are even though they're pretty happy and I understand that because you know you you as the artist or the creator created this thing and you're just so happy to see somebody else getting pleasure off of what you've created for them you know this genuine sincere pleasure it just, it's just it's amazing and it's not just with um, you know art or things like that create um, objects it's also with you know like I'm saying before like the mentor providing mentorship uh, this person you know the mentor is putting you know offering himself to the mentee and you know as a mentor you, you watch your mentee develop and grow and it makes the mentor happy like wow I've really helped this person out you know this is really uh, this means a lot to me I've given so much to this person and they've really received all this and they're really growing based off of what I've done and it, it, you know this is where you know quite honestly it kind of it really doesn't get much better than that in terms of life really and again I would again be conclusive about or just say my conclusions about the book um, true happiness like ultimate happiness the, the happiness that we get out of life the, the, the absolute form of happiness is ha happens when we see good that happens to people based off of what we've done you know that's when you can get the most happiness and that's why stories like a Christmas Carol resonate so much with people with Scrooge you know he has all his money and things like that but you know he comes to realize like that doesn't matter none of that matters what really matters is what I do to help others or impact other people when they're happy based on what I've done that's when it, it, you're, you, that's when you become happiness that's when you find true happiness right and that's that's what I took from the uh, Nico Machian ethics um, you know I probably missed the mark a little bit I mean I'm sure Aristotle wasn't exactly saying that but to me that's what uh, that's what I got out of the book and that's what the black ponder is all about <laughs> it's about not so much we're not like trying to regurgitate information we're not trying to give a book report about this is what uh, Aristotle was trying to say and uh, the, well, I'm talking about what meaning can we derive from uh, these philo philosophical works as relevant today? <laughs> because that's really what's important in my mind. True happiness is based off what we do to other people. And whether that's what we do to people is good, what we do to people is bad, or what we do to, or we do nothing to, be, to people. I mean, that's really what, where you're gonna find whether you whether you're either truly gonna be happy in life or you're not gonna be truly happy in life and so I would implore you try whatever it is that you do or whatever you want to be uh, focus on you know making people happy or, or doing good for people through whatever it is you want to do whether that is being an educator a construction worker you know a carpenter whatever you know whatever it is uh, you know, uh, IT person, uh, even like a janitor, what, what, whatever it is you do, you know, anything that you do, you know, bus driver, a crossing guard, uh, whatever it is you do, you have the potential to do, to make people happy based off of your function, based off of what you do. You can find happiness in even the most simplest things, depending on whether you affect people in the right way. So consider that. Anyway, try and read it you know I know there's some things that are obsolete I think there's some things that he, Aristotle says that are obvious so there's a lot of good knowledge of gems in here and I pointed out a few I missed a lot I mean this book it, 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 there's a lot in here and I just kind of like scratched the surface but I, thought, I, I liked it it was a great book the, 
uh, Nico Makian ethics, and I always struggle with that. Nico Makian, Nico Makian. I wonder if I'm even saying it right. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching. This is the Black Ponder. I'm Neil Trotter. I'll see you next time.